All right, so today I wanted to try something a little bit different. I did buy a brand new GoPro Hero 8 this week, and I figured I'm gonna do a Sunday video. It's something quick. Let's try it with the GoPro, so we'll see how this comes out. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is that right now it's really hot outside. We're in the dead dog days of summer. And because it's so hot, one of the things that's absolutely crucial is making sure your turtles have plenty of places to escape the heat. Now here at my house, I have a big wide open yard, as you can see, but I also have some shaded areas. And these shaded areas are absolutely crucial. So for tortoises like my sulcata tortoise, he has the ability to not only graze out in the sunny pasture type area, but he does have the ability to kind of come into this area and experience some shade. Now, likewise, my Gulf Coast box turtles have this enclosure here. And in this enclosure, there is like kind of this sunny area here, but they do have this area back here behind uh, whatever that plant's called. I forgot the name of it again, but they have the ability to kind of go back there and experience some of the shade. And then their pool, their little small pond that they have, it's also about 50-50 in the shade and in the sun. So this is their area back here. They have this, this area is available to them to kind of cool off and not be, you know, burning up in the sun because it does get really, really hot here. For here's a setup that I intentionally put this setup in direct sun because this is a tortoise that does like it dry. They do like it warm, but not necessarily hot. This is for the Russian tortoise and the Herman's tortoise. And what I've done here is they have a central little hide right here. And I really like this hide and it works really well. And if you lift it up, you'll see there's a couple of them in there. And so they have the ability to escape the sun and they're gonna come back out in the morning. They're gonna come back out late in the day and that's when they run around and forage. But right now, while it's 98 degrees and just hot as can be, they're gonna hide out in there. Um, I also added, this is another favorite of mine. I like to do these, uh, these little plastic pots. I like to kind of countersink those in the ground and they'll kind of go under those. Um, and then I added this today because I was noticing it was just getting so hot that they needed something to hide under. And this is a metal tin. And I originally had this tin to try and see if I could find some snakes under it in my yard. Never produced anything. So pull this back and you can see a couple of Russian tortoises right there. And so they have this tin they can hide under and it's a big broad area keeps them cool. So I wanted to kind of expand the area that's going to keep them cooled off and so that they're not overheating and not, you know, kind of getting dehydrated. If they get hot, they're going to get dehydrated. And that's the other issue is I had to make sure that they constantly have water. That's a big thing with tortoises, with turtles, box turtles, any of them. They need to stay constantly hydrated. Over here, alligator snapping turtle pond. So aquatic turtles also need to stay cool. And a big part of that is you need to pay attention when you build any setup. Let's say you're building an aquatic turtle pond like this one. You want to pay attention to how the sun tracks, how the sun is going to track over your setups. So with this one, I knew that this one was going to get mostly sun all day long, and but that's also why I provided all these logs. Um, you can see right here, big log overhang. And if you look closely, look, alligator snapping turtle right there. So, just had to do it, you know, I got a GoPro. But as you can see, because, uh, because it is hot, uh, the aquatic turtles in here, the alligator snapping turtles, they're gonna be going underneath those logs, um, not only to hide, but also for shade, because it does get, you know, pretty warm in here and they don't really need to be hot. So with any aquatic turtle setup, uh, you'll see over here with the other, the cooter pond, half of it is in the shade almost all day because they don't need to be hot. And then when your pond water gets hot, you're also gonna increase the amount of algae, you're gonna increase the quicker, um, you get fungal and bacterial blooms if that's gonna happen. So shade is important. Um, reptiles do need direct sun, but you don't want too much of it. And likewise, too much shade um, can also be detrimental because if you need to have some natural plant growth, it's just not really gonna happen, at least as much without sun. So you want to achieve a equilibrium with all that stuff and you really want to, you know, watch your animals. That's the best way to learn everything is just watch them, watch their behavior, watch how they uh, react to everything. So for this particular pond, the water is moving. Moving water also keeps it a little bit cooler. 
I've got logs for them to hide under uh, the plants. As the sun sets, those plants are going to create shadows and it's going to create shade. There's a plant behind me. It also helps create a little bit of shade. But as time goes by, I'm also going to kind of keep planting all around this pond. And those overhanging plants will also create more shade as time goes by. This pond is not even a year old yet, so it really is not mature at all. A pond, in my opinion, is not, a, not mature until it's at least a year old and gone through all the seasons. So let's go over here and we'll look at some more cover. All right, so over here at the giant musk turtle stock tank, uh, it's full of plants. It's full of water hyacinth, Amazon frogbit, and duckweed. And what this does is this is a tank that's in full sun all day long, and the plants actually give it a lot of shade and also filter the water. So the water is clean and clear, and it's nice and cool under there, underneath all those plants. And the Mexican giant musk is a happy and fat turtle. Over here in this corner of this pond, um, this gets hit by the sun all day long. This is probably the single driest part of this pond area. And so one of the things I had to do was, <laughs> as bad as this banana plant looks, I planted it here, it probably wasn't the best spot for it. So I added this uh, section of a palm tree. I actually got this at my buddy Bob's place on the beach. It was just a, you know, palm tree bark. And it ends up being a really good hide. So let's see if anything's under it. And sure enough, there's a box turtle enjoying box turtle enjoying that hide and enjoying the uh, cover that it provides and a little bit of shade. And then underneath these tree barks right here, no wonder that is probably another box turtle. I can see that it's been dug up, but not really going to mess with it too much. But I do like to use those tree barks. Um, if you have them just laying around, if you have some woods behind your house and there is some sections of bark, take those, clean them off a little bit, and then they make really great cover. And then the added benefit you're going to get from that is, let's say, you know, you have a lot of nesting activity. You know, in this pond area, I have a lot of nesting activity. And if I'm doing the math correctly, I had a few things hatch. Um, sorry. <laughs> if I'm doing the math correctly, I had a few things laid uh, about two or three months ago. So I should have some hatching happen, ha hatching happening soon. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I can't talk. So I should have some hatching happening soon. And another thing you're gonna to wanna to provide is cover for those hatchlings. Um, when they come out of the ground, if you have eggs laid in the ground, which even the best of us that are good at trying to find nests, it's gonna happen. You're gonna have some laid in the ground. So you wanna provide cover for those little babies. So I used, uh, I, here again, I used another you know, plant pot. And this one is actually a broken pot, but I did just enough, kind of buried it into the ground, it's sturdy, and it gives enough for a turtle to kind of come and just get a little bit of cover. And again, little pieces of bark. Uh, plant life is also gonna help. So having the, um, having all of that cover, plus having, you know, some broadleaf plants. You know, I use elephant ears and bananas. You don't have to use the same thing I do, but this plant, for example, I don't even know what this thing is, but I let it grow because it does provide shade inside here. Um, and then if we flip, and look this way, all of this weird stuff that's growing over my fence also provides shade. So I, I knew that this pond was gonna need a lot of shade. And so I just kind of allowed a lot of things to grow and it's very natural looking. Uh, if you're really picky about how your yard looks and you want everything to look manicured and perfect, probably shouldn't have turtles anyway, but it may not look attractive to you. But for me, I just want it as natural as possible because the more natural it is, the more natural the turtles are gonna behave and the happier they're gonna be. Look at this guy. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Oh, he, he definitely is looking at the fingers. Yeah, man. So, yeah, you can see it, it just, they're, they're so much happier. And um, I don't really get in here a lot because I feel like the more I kind of walk around in here, uh, the more I disturb this, the more I feel I might be prohibiting more plant growth. Um, so I try to only get in here when I have to or when I'm filming one of these. But otherwise, I just kind of leave certain areas just to the turtles that live in here. So I hope this video helped. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Um, remember, shade in the summer and sun in the winter. So if you can do those two things, I think you'll be good. 
And if you live somewhere in the, the far north, whether you're on, you know, whatever continent, North America, Europe, Asia, wherever, um, just try to keep turtles outdoors that are native to the type of climate where you live. So like you could keep uh, American box turtles in Europe because a lot of places have a similar climate. Likewise, you can keep European turtles in the U.S. in similar climates. So try to work with what you have. Don't fight nature, just go with it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Don't fight nature. <laughs> so hopefully this is good. Hopefully you guys learned something and I'll catch y'all later. See you later.